I'm ready. Hey everyone, it's Ken from Ken's Corner, and I'm back with uh, our fan panel. Join with me is my co-host Joe Moyer from Whistle Radio 102.9 FM Stouffville, and our special guest today. Let's welcome Mr. Paul Henny Hendrick. Hi guys, how are how is everyone doing? Good, hey, Ken. Good thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Yeah. We're just going to jump right into this because for some reason. We might be on a time limit. <laughs> All right, Paul, I'm going to ask you the first question. And actually, we're going to go around the board and get everyone's feeling on this. Do you mm -hmm. feel William Nylander right now is the best player in the NHL? Paul, we're going to start with you and just go around the room. Well, that's, that's fairly lofty elite status, Ken. But he is certainly, uh, he's certainly in the top five. 10 right now it's early in the season let's be honest but he's having a hell of a start to the season he is carrying this team and it's just great to say a contract year is something very beautiful when a player is playing for next year and he's playing for this year as well he's not going anywhere but that number 88 should be taken off his back and i think 12.5 should be placed squarely on it because i think that's what he's going to get Thank you. JT, you're right beside Paul. Let's uh, just go continue across the board here. Um, I feel the same way. I'm thinking he's probably one of the better, if not the best uh, player right now. He's playing both ends of the ice. I'm watching him do things that he never does. Um, he's matured into another level of hockey player, I believe. I believe it is because it's a contract year. Um, but I'm hoping that he's uh, he's realizing the the value that he can give to a team and everyone how much they love him for it so uh again yeah i don't know 12.5 but yeah he's he's gonna be a pretty penny boy that's for sure yeah uh, joe well you know what the one thing we haven't seen that we're seeing this year with him is consistency he's doing it game in game out and his point streak just continues there's always been a number of games throughout the year where he sort of disappeared for two or three games you're not seeing that this year and in big moments like the overtime he comes through time and time again. So uh, it's scaring me at 12.5, Henny. I was going to say 11, but you know what? If he keeps this pace, how do you argue with that? I mean, he's exactly. right up there, top five player for sure right now. Uh, George, your opinion on, the, on this? I'm going to say top five for sure in the NHL. I really do like him. I just uh, hope after that contract signed, he stays doing what he's doing. And uh, he's, he's doing a big thing for us right now. And last but not least, Mr. Gordon Bell, uh, your opinion on William Nylander. I'd put him in the top five. Uh, I think he got Kyle Connor up there. He's still got McDavid as much as he's struggling. Leon Dreisaitl. I, I'd put him in the top five for sure. And I'm probably going to go right in the middle of between Joe and Paul and see he's probably going to get at least probably 12 in and around there. Um, if he keeps the way he's going. Yeah. I want to introduce a couple more names that to that list that might be in the top five right now. JT Miller, uh, maybe DeBrincat out in Detroit right now, as it stands uh, with uh, McDavid. I don't know if anyone agrees with me, but that's my opinion. My next question, actually, Paul, um, Mitch Marner, uh, he reaches the fastest 400 assists in, uh, I think, in Leaf history. Um, I don't know if I'm right about that, but I think I am. <laughs> but anyway, it, does Mitch Marner have more to give uh, than what what is going on with him this season? I, th I think he's fine, Ken. Uh, and I don't think we should overreact. I was watching with a friend this morning, and he thinks Mitch disappears from time to time. And then I said, yeah, and then he comes back with seven straight games of outstanding point totals. He's a two-way player. He's a generational talent. Uh, and and if, to compare him to William Nylander, William's starting right winger on the Swedish national team. Mitch is the starting top line right winger on the Canadian national team. The Leafs are so fortunate to have both these guys. I think Mitch is fine exactly where he is. He's an absolute gem. And when you get William Nylander, Mitch Marner, and Austin Matthews and back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back drafts, you're in for a good run. And I think we should just watch on, hope these guys stay healthy and enjoy the ride uh, because it's going to be a good one. I, I agree 100%. I'm going to go to you, JT. And your question is, uh, Max Domi has yet to score a goal as a Toronto Maple Leaf, although his shootout goal that day was very nice. 
he, uh, it does it matter? Uh, does he need to score a goal or is the nine assists in the third line that he's playing on right now enough right now? Um, my belief, I think when he first hit, he was a lot like uh, Bertuzzi. He was a bit discombobulated. That's the word I think I used earlier. Um, he looks a little, he looked a little confused and he's really still hasn't found his absolute groove, but he hasn't been a detriment. Um, it's not that he's, he's causing, um, negative, uh, plays coming the other way, but, uh, he's just not getting the goals and the assists and stuff that he would possibly get if he was moved up. Um, for Tuesday, they've moved around. He's found a sweet spot now. He's really, uh, last couple of games, he's really come into his own. I think, uh, Max will be the same way pretty soon, but. Yeah, I, I think he's a two-way player. I think he's 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 doing fine. Dude, he'll he'll get there. Thank you, uh, Joe. Actually, uh, JT mentioned Tyler Batuzzi. Now that's your question: Is Tyler Batuzzi finally coming around? I absolutely can see a difference in his play from the first uh, fifteen games to the last few. He has been uh, noticeable on the ice. His hustle level, his forecheck. I mean, he caused that uh, caused that goal for John Tavares when he uh, forechecked. I believe it was uh, our old friend Justin Hall into the boards and caused a turnover and fed uh, Mr. Tavares nicely for the winning goal. And that's the kind of player that I think we need and we expect. And I think he's finding his groove really, really well. And I'm I'm excited to see what he's got yet to come. Thank you. George, uh, our third line, our new third line of Domi, Yarncroc, and Robertson. Can you give us your opinion on uh, how you feel they're playing uh, so far this season? Well, I'm, I'm really liking the way Domi is playing with his passing and uh, getting uh, uh, Robertson those goals. And he's also out there to back up his teammates. He uh, he won't be afraid to uh, back up his teammates. And uh, I'm, I'm really appreciating that third line with your arm crock being the crash nut crasher. And uh, it looks really good for me. I'm saying that Domi's doing all right. Thank you. Uh, Gord, this is your question. Uh, the Leafs, it looks like we've now taken over third in the Atlantic Division ahead of Detroit. Uh, we're behind Florida, I believe, possibly. I know we won that game this morning. I don't know if anyone has an update on that one yet. But here's your question. Do you believe the Leafs, by season's end, will actually catch and surpass the Boston Bruins? No, I don't. The Leafs are going to end up second. I don't think unless they get on a major roll with the way that Boston's playing I don't think they're going to catch Boston um, so I think the Leafs can beat Boston absolutely but do I think they're going to catch them point wise I highly doubt it they're probably going to end up second right behind Boston Thank you uh, Paul your, the question for you sir um, the Leafs just went to Sweden they had that big Sweden swing, swing as I like to call it now can you explain to us what uh, it would be like for our team togetherness? Is that like a very big bonding thing that, that has happened for the Leafs now? I, I think it is. It's a long road trip, and, and the guys get to bond quite often over the course in North America. Uh, but I think what was special was the opportunity to go home with William Nylander and celebrate alongside him. And you couldn't have written a better Hollywood script as to way that two game series ended for the Maple Leafs with number 88 scoring that beautiful goal and uh, just riding the karma that he's been on. So I think more than anything, the guys enjoyed getting together, enjoyed uh, celebrating Boria's legacy, uh, seeing Matt Sundin. But I think the opportunity to rally around William Nylander and let him celebrate his homecoming the way he did uh, is good on its own. Now they get a chance. Uh, they're going to be home, I think, probably 10 o'clock Canada time uh, Monday morning. Uh, they'll get a few days off and then get ready to play on Friday. So all in all, uh, good shape. But a road trip rallied around number 88. Thank you. This is a group question, guys. And really, it could be a yes or no. Or uh, if you feel that it's going to happen later in the season. Now, Paul, we're going to ask you first. Will the Leafs make a trade for a defenseman? before Christmas time? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think they're going to be fine with what they've got right now. Uh, hold on to some of the powder in the keg, so to speak, and wait to see what happens in the new year. Ken, Christmas isn't that far away. It's 36 days away. Uh, so so I, I, I don't see it. I, I don't see it just yet. I think they're good enough the way they're going. 
Does anyone disagree with Paul? Is there anyone on the board that disagree that they think okay. the Leafs will make this trade for a Zadorov or a Tanev that we're hearing out there? Well, I would like to see a Zadorov come to our come to our team. Uh, he's a big, he's a big, he's a big defense, and he'll be a lot of help back there. Um, Do you feel like it's going to happen before Christmas? Yeah, I don't know. I I would hope so. Anyone else? I don't. I don't think they're going to trade for Zadorov or Hannafin before Christmas. I think so, if anything happens, they will have to after the Christmas break. Okay, so does everyone agree? Thank you. Does everyone agree that the Leafs will make a trade for a defenseman this season? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hey, hey, Ken, if if a trade is to happen, this week is a good time. When you've got five days between games, this is when coaches get fired, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying that's happening in Toronto, but it might be the time to drop the uh, shoe on uh, the other foot and and bring it in. Uh, we'll see where Calgary's at. Uh, that's certainly an enticing, enticing trade. Uh, Robertson got some ice time. I know he'd be dangled as well. Um, there's a few other players on that Marley a team that could be very influential in that deal happening. So I'll take back just a little bit. You know, this five-day period coming up before the next game, it could be the calm before the storm. And yes, maybe possibly, just possibly, there could be a defenseman coming. Although I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. in fully agreeance with everyone. I do believe we're going to, I've been, I, you can ask Joe on the radio show. I've been pumping Zadora's name for a long time and I really want to see that trade happen uh, before Christmas. I agree with you guys. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, now I'm going to just give you a couple of names and you guys can just give your opinion on, on uh, how these players are playing this season. This is going to be our last kind of questions here. Uh, thanks, guys, for uh, being on here and playing along with me. It's been tons of fun having this many guys. And I'd like to say this is as many, many as I've ever had here. So it, it is lots of fun. Thanks a lot, guys, for being here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Paul. Uh, Morgan Riley and Kelly Yarncrock. Can you uh, tell us how you feel these two players have played so far this season? For me, Morgan's just consistency. He uh, He's an elite defenseman. Some might argue that he's a second-pairing elite defenseman. I think he's top-pairing elite defenseman. It's amazing a year ago when he was out for that 15 or so game stretch, just how well Toronto played and rallied around him. Um, Giordano and company really jumping up to help out. Uh, they need him to be as healthy as they possibly can. And for Callie Yonkrock, Ken, he's the Swiss Army Knight, the proverbial guy who can stick him in anywhere and help. And if need be, go up on that top line as he did with Austin and Mitch last year and make a difference. Um, would you like more from him? We'd all like more from everybody. But he can slot in anywhere on those lines, one through four, and, and really make an impact. So I like both those players, obviously. Thank you. And Joe, I just want to let you know, I strategically did not give you Kelly Yonkrock's name because Thank you. he's not a fan favorite this year. Uh, <laughs> JT, yeah, you're, you're next, JT, and your, your players are Austin Matthews, which is probably an easy one for you. But yeah. I'm going to ask you about Mr. Wool, our goalie. Okay. Um, I think Austin, he showed two years ago how many goals that boy can score. Uh, last year, he took his game to a to the other side of that of that game, and showed how much of a two hundred foot player he is, and how devoted he is to the defensive side, blocking shots, throwing hits, doing all the, the things that a centerman needs to do. And then uh, now this year, I think he's kind of combined the both of it. Now he's potting goals like a machine, and he's hitting anything that moves. He's dropping and blocking. He is he is he is the number one player in I think in the NHL. Um, Wall. Um, I said last year that he should be our starter. Um, at the end of the year when we came through, I I praised that boy for a long time. He came through the same system as Matthews did, um, except for the going to the to the Europe side. But uh, he came up through the U.S. national system and then Boston, and um, he paid his dues and he's played some good hockey. Um, he's a calm before. He's a calm, calm guy. So when the shit's hitting the fan and everyone's hustling and bustling and there's scrums around the net. He just shakes it off. He don't give a shit. Uh, goal goes in. Uh, it happens. On to the next one. He is he is the calming nature that the Leafs need between the pipes, in, in my opinion. Thank you. Uh, Joe, you're next. Our captain, our captain, Mr. John Tavares. 
And uh, Tyler Batuzzi, from your earlier question. Listen, Mr. Tavares just continues to make it happen. He amazes me. You, you wait for him to fall off. He just doesn't. He's still at least a point of game player, still a big player. I think he's a big leader on this team. But that being said, I do think that uh, after his contract, this will be coming. And it is really Austin Matthews' team right now. And I think Austin Matthews is the future captain. I'd love to see Tavares come back as a third line center at a cheaper contract and retire relief. That would be great once uh, once this year and next year are done for him. But you can't ask any more from this guy. He just continued just consistency, consistency. Uh, as far as Tyler Batuzzi, I think, yeah, he lost his way. He was trying to find the system a little bit. But I certainly like what I've seen as I talked to you before uh, the last five or six games. He stood out as as he seems to be figuring it out. And I think maybe the pressure of having him on the first line right off the hop didn't help him. And just to defend myself against Mr. Yarncroke, mm -hmm. I just thought he is not the guy you want with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. I wanted Matthew Nyes up there. And mm -hmm. uh, bingo, you know what? Toot my own horn. I was right. You were definitely right, and I gave you a, a text right away when that happened that day. So I, I, I will have, I'll pat you on the back for that one, Mike, my uh, uh, friendly co-host. Sheldon, listen to me. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Uh, George, uh, you got some, an easy one yourself. William D. Lander, and seems to be your favorite these days, Mr. Max Domi. Well, Nylander is doing what he what he's he's doing really great, and I just hope I just I just hope he does the exact same thing that after that pen hits the paper and he gets his contract. Hope he stays stays consistent and does what he has to do. Now Domi, I mean he's I've always liked him, and uh, he's out there. He will defend his teammates, and uh, you know the goal the scoring will come, but he's uh, he's making it look look real good for uh, Robertson out there. Yeah, he's definitely making uh, Nick uh, Robertson much better. And Kelly Arncroft in, in the same breath, if you ask me. He's uh, really running that line with his speed and adding that bit of that snot, as Mr. Tree Living says. Gord, you're uh, up next, last but not least. And your players are Mitch Marner and Matthew Nice. Well, I'm going to go and agree with Joe here that Sheldon finally smartened up and realized that Yarncrook wasn't the guy to play with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. Bringing Nyes up there, you got a guy that's digging, hitting, uh, is not afraid to stand in front of the net and take some of those shots that I wouldn't stand in front of if you paid me a million bucks to stand in front of. Um, any of those defensemen shooting that puck, even William Nylander shooting the puck like he does, no, um, I think Mitch Marner is Mitch Marner. Uh, consistent. Um, yes, he drops off every couple of games, and then all of a sudden you see him for 10 games, and you're going, where did this guy suddenly appear from? Um, again, playing with Austin Matthews, you're going to get the assists. You're going to get the, the ability to show what kind of player you are. And really, Mitch Marner, I think, other than Austin Matthews, is pretty much the backbone to this team of where they're going to go and how far they're going to go. Um, Nye's moving up from the third line to the second line to the first line was the smartest move Sheldon could make. Um, teaching the young kid, very, very smart. And I, I really like Nye. I really do. I think he's a fabulous player. Thank you. Um, this is a little bit of a bonus question because I haven't been given my time limit yet. So we got a couple more questions here to go. Uh, Paul, how many goals will Austin Matthews score this year? And everyone, you can have your say in that, uh, that as well. Uh, 48. It's a number that comes up to me. 48 goals. I think there's some puck to share around this year, but I'm going to go 48. And I think I may have undercut him, but I'll stick with that, Ken. Oh, well, here's a bonus question for you. How many uh, will William Nylander score this season? I, I think Willie's going to get 45 goals. I think you're going to get comparability uh, with those two guys. And, and, and I think that's more – I think there's a better chance for Willie to uh, – Willie, for Austin to, to, to break that 50-goal mark, obviously. Hopefully he stays healthy. But I think 45 is legit for, uh, for number 88. Thank you. JT, I'm going to give you everyone, actually – uh, the same two players. JT first. Austin Matthews. 
Uh, yeah, I see him being a 50 to 55 guy this year. I don't think he'll go up over the 60 mark again. Um, I think he's just, he's fine tuned himself to be more responsible everywhere. And that's going to take away from that, that goal scoring touch that we've, we've been known to see. Um, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking 50 to 55 on Austin. Um, and who is player number two? Uh, Mr. Nylander. Nylander, Nylander will be a 45 guy as well. Um, at least he may, he may push 50. Um, it all depends on how that second lad, they, that's, I, I don't know. That's just a, he, he's a machine and he's becoming, he's coming into his own and he just gets better and better and better. And uh, yeah, I don't even know. I can't even judge where that guy can top out at, honestly. Joe, your, your turn now. I, I think Nylander's on a mission. He's a 50 goals guy for sure. And I put Austin Matthews just a bit ahead of him. So wouldn't it be nice to have two 50 goal scorers in the same year uh, mm-hmm. on the Toronto Maple Leafs? That would be something I'd like to, I, I kind of see is 50 to 55 for Austin. And maybe, uh, maybe like, like Henny says, sharing the wealth a little bit with Willie and uh, gets 50. Yeah. I actually believe that we're going to see possibly two fifties before we see three guys with a hundred this season. Uh, George, your uh, take on, on the two. I'm, I definitely see Matthews with 50 and it, you know, and it would, it would definitely be great to see Nylander with 50. So let's just say 50, 50. That's great. And Mr. Gord. Uh, I'm going to give up the Matthews probably 55 around there. And I think William Nylander probably 52. It'd be nice awesome. to see us having two fifty goal scorers on the Leafs, and knowing that Austin Matthews is <laughs> going to be up there and assist as well. You're looking at probably, uh, probably three or four guys in the hundred range. Yeah, that, that's what I was just saying. Does anyone agree that we'll possibly see three hundred uh, guys? Paul, yeah, it's a tough, tough order, but it's not a not un uh, not unattainable for this group. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, my last question, because yeah. I am timing out, although we got eight minutes, so you guys can uh, take your time still. Let's give uh, a score for this next game coming up, uh, Toronto versus the Chicago Blackhawks at 2 o'clock, I believe, on Friday, uh, this coming up. Uh, Paul, we're going to start with you. What's our final score? The Leaf team's on a bit of a roll right now, so it's not going to be that typical road trip, come back home or come back at least to North America and fall flat. But I've got a feeling these guys are they're they're, they're rolling. I'm going to go six two Toronto. Oh, beautiful! I would love to see that. JT, yeah. your turn. <clears throat> uh, I would say Toronto five, Bedard two. <laughs> that's probable very probable <laughs> joe i know you're laughing there but it is your turn uh, listen i'll you know, glass half empty guy i'll say they're coming back from a road trip time change be a little bit tired and strange mm-hmm. things happen in chicago for the leafs uh, yep. i think it's gonna be a little bit closer i'll, I'll say four three leafs in overtime awesome george your opinion your opinion I'm saying Leafs 4-1 and Bedard doesn't get one goal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Gore, what's your final say? I'm going to go 3-2 Leafs in overtime. I think coming back off the road trip in Sweden. And who scores your overtime? I'm going to go with Willie. I got to give it to Willie again. After yeah. that goal today, I don't know where that came from. but Well, it was somebody- a Hollywood ending, like Paul said. Uh, actually, uh, just a little take, uh, Gordon and I were actually predicting on who would score that final goal. Uh, we didn't obviously say any Minnesota player, but he picked Nylander. I picked Domi. And Isn't Nylander a go-to guy for every overtime? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I, you <laughs> really? know what? I, I should have well, gave him first pick. <laughs> well, not everybody gets to pick Austin Matthews when they know that William Nylander is in Sweden and he's got to show up his grandma. And you know they're they're leaving, so he's got to show one for his grandma. But that goal today, unbelievable! I did Couldn't, not see that coming. It was like a movie script, wasn't it? Just perfect. Everything oh. was just perfect for him. <laughs> Paul, we're going to give you last word. Now. Sorry, uh, Paul, we're going to give you last word here because you're our special guest. Uh, ah. Is there anything that you would like to add to what you've seen just lately? Anything quick? 
Uh, no, that this is just a team coming together. A year ago at this time, uh, especially coming through California, things weren't good, and they went on to yet another plus 100-point season. This is a very good hockey club. They've got to get better defensively as well, and maybe to echo Joe. William Nylander has scored overtime in Chicago before. He used to live there. It's kind of like his hometown growing up. Mm. Um, and yeah, maybe he does it again this Friday. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Mm. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm Ken. I'm from Ken's Corner. And I've been pleasured and thankful and honored to have my special guest, Paul Henny Hendrick. Uh, Thank my you, Paul. co-host Joe, Thank you, guys. lawyer, uh, my contingent from Calgary, uh, George. Thanks for staying strong out there in Calgary. Our Mister JT from all the way up there in Northern Ontario of Thunder Bay, and our downtown uh, guy right here who gets stuck in traffic, but he still joins us on this podcast today. Gordon Bell. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining me. And if anyone wants to say bye to Paul before we leave, you're welcome to now. Mm -hmm. Have a good one, Paul. Enjoy your smoke. Thank you, you guys. It's been a it's been a privilege to share on a panel with all of you. Uh, passionate hockey fans and 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 uh, intelligence. And I'm sorry I brought that intelligence quotient down just a little bit, but <laughs> keep it Never, not at all. Never. All, all the way from Calgary. There you go. <laughs> oh, let's go. An honor, Paul. Thank you so much for giving up your time. We really appreciate it. Always uh, my pleasure, pleasure, Joe. Likewise, thank you. Like Dude. always, Paul, it's, it's a pleasure Take care, and gents. honor. Thanks Be a lot, safe. guys. Go, let's go. Go, let's yes. go. Okay, go, let's go. Have a good one, guys.